I'm Sal Sincata, and this is Shutter Network. Morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world, welcome to Shutter Network. And today I'm here recording in London, sunny London uh, at that. We are here, we're building our portfolio, and that's what this whole episode is dedicated to, building a better portfolio and understanding the various elements that, that go into it, right? It's not just about uh, shooting, recording, uh, you know, stylized shoots. It's really understanding what your portfolio means to your business and the best way to display it and how to connect to your clients. So. Uh, we have got an amazing show for you lined up. We've got Roberto, uh, Roberto Valenzuela, and we did something really unique this time. Uh, because we're on location, we previously filmed some of these segments. And so you're going to notice we're going to drop back and forth in between a Skype call uh, and then, of course, our studio. And be prepared to hear some back background noise here because, like I said, we are here in London uh, working on my portfolio. But we're going to talk more about that in a second. Uh, then we've got Ilias Frankel. He's here from Squarespace. He's going to talk to you about uh, how to display your portfolio and what clients are looking for. And clients are, right, your families, your babies, your weddings. Uh, but before we get going, let's talk about what's new, what's going on in the industry. So, of course, if you haven't heard about it by now, I'm wondering where you're living, if you're under a rock or something. Shutterfest 2015, April 7th and 8th. Uh, that is our event that we're hosting in St. Louis. Uh, it's a $99 event, regularly $129. You've got access to some of the top name speakers in the world. You will not get access to this caliber of speaker uh, anyplace else. So you're talking your Vaughn, Bambi Cantrell, Craig Lemire. I mean, you're talking about big, big names uh, that are going to be there educating you. And what makes Shutterfest so unique, uh, visit the website, but what makes it so unique is the fact that uh, you are hands-on, you're shooting. So it's not just all theoretical PowerPoint slides, you know, for days on end. Uh, it's really about some classroom style learning and then getting out there and putting it into practice. To me, that is the best way to learn. You gotta be hands-on, especially as a photographer. Uh, and next thing I wanna talk to you about is, uh, you know, David J. Uh, maybe you know him from Pass or Shoot and Share. Uh, just kind of making, making some waves in news. It's always interesting uh, to see what people say or do and how it just creates a complete stir in our industry. And so just recently he made a post around the 4th of July that uh, all of us should just basically share our copyright. And you could, uh, it's on Petapixel, so if you want to go out there and just read up on the article, uh, it, it's definitely worth talking about because it's an interesting concept, if you will, that he's perpetuating, which is just basically, hey, if we're photographing, let's share our images with our clients and let them do whatever they want with those images. Let them edit those images, let them print those images, let them, I don't know, do all sorts of things that the clients want to do with those images. So uh, the, the one thing I do know about our industry is that uh, everybody's definitely got something to say uh, about all that. And that's, that's always pretty interesting, right? Because there are images, people are very passionate about either right, burning to a DVD, or people are very passionate about uh, just, you know, set, not giving away the DVD and that, how that's eroding the, the market. My personal opinion, and this is my opinion, everybody's entitled to their opinion, we can have these debates all day long, and I would love to have that conversation one day with David because I'm not sure I would ever end up uh, agreeing with him, but who knows, maybe he would shed some light. His, per his perspective is, hey, make the image, share that with their client, he would never book a photographer. Uh, that wouldn't give them all the images, full use rights of those images. Uh, from my perspective, I can't agree with that. I can't get behind that. I think it's ab absolutely asinine to do something like that. And here's, here's kind of my philosophy. It's not about whether David's way is right and my way is, or my way is right, or your way is wrong versus my way, right? It's, it's not about that, really, because ultimately what it comes down to is what works for you, what works for your business. Uh, and that's the way you have to think about it, is what will work for you. now. Here's my mindset. Here's what goes into it. You could go to a restaurant, McDonald's, and you can buy a cheeseburger fully made for you. Uh, you can go to a uh, kind of buffet bar where you make your own plate uh, and you handle the fixings and what you're putting on your, your burger, right? Uh, or you can go to a high-end steakhouse. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's pick a Capitol Grill or maybe even a Roos Chris, right? Somewhere in the middle. Uh, and they're, they're going to prepare for you the way it's meant to be prepared, the way the food is meant to be enjoyed by a chef, okay? Are any one of those restaurants wrong? No. What's, gonna, what's happening here is the restaurants aren't wrong. What they're doing is they've created a business model and they're servicing their clients and their clients are voting with their dollars. I would say there's no chance of McDonald's going out of business, just like there's probably no chance of the steakhouse going out of business, right? Clients are going to figure out what they're looking for and they're going to go to that restaurant. 
Now let's try and apply that back to our own business. I don't want to be uh, mass producing events. I've got to make enough money to cover all my expenses, right? Uh, overhead, studio space. Uh, now, take money off the table because the argument could be made, well, charge more and then still give away the digital images. I've heard that argument a million times. That's really not what it's about for me. It's really not about bottom line dollar for me. It's about providing an end-to-end -end service for my client. I think there's a big miss if I just hand my client over the raw chicken, so to speak, and say, hey, go grill it, uh, follow these uh, five easy steps and go make it yourself. Maybe some are gonna get it, maybe some aren't. But ultimately, I wanna control how my imagery looks. Uh, I wanna create artwork for my client. I wanna give my client timeless products that are gonna last forever. I don't want them going online to some of these horrible sites that are not producing heirloom quality products. So, we could have this debate all day long. This is just the intro, so we're probably gonna do a, uh, an episode dedicated just to talking about this, but don't attack David's way uh, of thinking about it. Don't attack my way of thinking about it. Instead, all I'm looking to do is get you to think about what you're doing. What are you doing and why are you doing it? If the only reason you're doing it is because everyone else is doing it, you're already going down the wrong path. Uh, what you need to do is do what's right for your business. What's going to work for you? That's the most important uh, part here. So in the spirit of that, let's start talking about your portfolio. So today's episode uh, is fully dedicated to building a better portfolio. And what we're going to do is, uh, you know, talk about the things that I'm using, uh, experts like Roberto, uh, and what we're seeing in the industry go on. And so let's talk a little bit about uh, the importance of building your portfolio, right? This is how clients find you. They find you via your portfolio. Uh, they're gonna work with you based on what they're seeing online. And your portfolio today, by the way, uh, is not based on what we're, you know, a print portfolio. Back in the day, that was your portfolio. Now, you could make the argument that'd be a neat way to meet with clients, show them prints and do things like that. But today, that's not really the case. Uh, what you're looking to do is uh, it's all online. So your website truly is your portfolio. That's the thing you have to, you have to keep in mind. And so let's start with that, the importance of a good portfolio in your website. Is your, has your website been built in the 1990s, right? In the late 90s, early 2000s? Technology has changed. Uh, something that's very important right now to search engine optimization is building a mobile friendly site. So you can no longer just build a website uh, that is that is just good, right, looking at it from a computer. More and more users are accessing the web via their mobile devices, and the trends are just insane. What we're seeing now, more and more people starting to access the web from their phone. And I don't have the demographics handy, but that trend is going from 5%, 10%, 20%, 40% of users accessing the internet via a mobile device. Is your, is your uh, website mobile friendly? I know mine's not, and I'm in the process of revamping mine so that my clients can see my portfolio that way. Uh, this is where looking at a company like Squarespace uh, becomes very, very powerful because they're taking care of all that back-end work for you, right? But that's just the infrastructure of your website. And so what we also have to think about is, you know, when we're talking about your portfolio, uh, it's not just about your website. You do realize when we're talking about your portfolio and building a better portfolio, uh, we're talking about the way you pose your clients, the way you light your clients, the scenery that you select for your clients. Uh, right, the post-production that you're opting for with your clients. This all lends towards what I would call your portfolio. Now, when your client comes to your website, they're going to judge you on your first 10 images. And that's the exercise I want you to go through right now is taking a look at what are the first 10 images that they see on your website. I'm constantly blown away by what I'm seeing uh, on some of your websites. I do portfolio reviews and I, I consult with several photographers in the industry. And when I first thing I do is I go to their website and I look. And I'm normally, not always, horrified at what I'm seeing. Not because the imagery is necessarily bad or good, it doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm looking for is, does it sign signal your style to the bride, right? So if I go there and I'm seeing first five pictures are shoes, who cares? First five pictures, ring shot, who cares? That is not what they're booking for. I've never seen a client book me because they go, that ring shot you got was absolutely incredible. Instead, my clients are going to Pinterest uh, and taking pictures of previous weddings that I've done and bringing those to me and going, I want this picture in front of the arch. And these are all my signature style imagery. And do you know why that's so powerful? A message back to me, because that's all on Pinterest, that's all on my website, that's what I'm showing my clients. That's your portfolio. You've got to make the investment in your portfolio. And there's a number of ways to do it, right? So we're gonna kinda get into that uh, in a second here, but there's absolutely a number of ways to build your portfolio. And so, You've just got to make the mental decision that this is ultimately what you're going to do. That's what I want to see you 
uh, investing in. That's got to be your takeaway. The other thing, well, let's come back to that for a second. All too often, uh, when I'm looking at styles, right, and I'm looking at portfolios, I'll see one image lit with off-camera flash, hard light. Love it. Then I'm going to go to my next image. I'm going to see this backlit, soft, airy, dreamy shot. Again, beautiful shot. But they, those two things don't go together. And so what's going to end up happening is, is you're going to confuse your clients and there's going to be a disconnect. Again, I can't stress the importance of getting your style under control. I'm not here to tell you which style is right, which style is wrong. That's what makes you an artist. What I, am, what I will critique you on is consistency. And so same goes for me. Love or hate my work, it's consistent. Maybe it's consistently bad. I don't know. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's consistent. And that's what you should be uh, looking for in your own portfolio. And that's part of what I'm doing here in London. I'm here in London. I'm teaching a workshop, right? And that's for my students. And I'm going to teach for them, my client. Uh, and then part of that time that I'm here, I'm in London, Prague, Croatia, Austria. Uh, I've got six to eight shoots lined up that are for me. That's the important part to understand here. Because when I'm working for a paid client, uh, it becomes very difficult to produce what I want to produce. And let's dive into that. The next thing you want to consider in building your, a better portfolio is shooting for you. Okay, so when we're working with clients, weddings, families, babies, this is my thought process. They're hiring me to do a job, not necessarily experiment. And I get it. And part of being an artist is we've got to experiment a little, create beautiful shots. But what about that day where you've never worked with off-camera flash and suddenly you want to try today, right? I'm not going to try that when I've got a two-year-old running around and I've never done it before because I need an hour to be able to make mistakes, test different lighting situations, and just screw up. I don't need the added pressure of trying to perform for my client. That's not fair to the client and it's definitely not fair to me. So instead what I'm going to do is when that client comes to me, I'm going to produce what they hired me to produce. Maybe that's 90% of my time there. But then whether it's during that shoot and I go to my client, hey, this is going to be an experiment. The picture may completely suck, uh, but I'm going to try something. They love that. But there's only a certain amount of time the client's willing to watch you experiment before it starts making you look bad. So instead what I do, and I've been doing this for the past year and a half, two years, is I've been taking, my mission this year is to reinvent myself, reinvent my studio, reinvent my portfolio, right? So I've been doing the same thing for damn near six, eight years now. And don't get me wrong, it pays the bills. My clients come in, they book me on it, they love it, I'm bored. I'm getting bored with what I do. I don't wanna just roll up to a scene and be like, okay, stand there, click next, got it, nailed it, nailed it in the can, let's go home. I want to be inspired. I want to love what I'm doing. I want to love what it means to be a photographer, to be an artist. And so what I'm doing now, this year, more than ever, I've committed myself to rebuilding my portfolio. That is part of what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's a big investment. You don't have to come here. Go to your city. Go to another city. If you live in the Midwest, go to Chicago if you, and you want to do something urban. Uh, if you want something in the countryside, find the countryside. Travel. Get in your car. Load it up. Hire a model and go do what you got to do. That's your opportunity to build your portfolio. So for me, I'm doing London, Prague, Austria, Croatia, and we've lined up just these gorgeous uh, scenes. We, we research online using uh, Google, uh, street views, uh, top map views, right? There's so many ways for you to find beautiful imagery and locations uh, without having ever been to that city. We line up models, we call in favors, we're trying to network with friends. These are all the things that you can do uh, to gain access to the, to the people you need access to. Hair, makeup, everything you need. So we've got full on shoots that are scheduled. Wardrobe, some wardrobe's been brought from home, some wardrobe's been ordered from overseas, right? So we have a plethora of, of wardrobe as well, uh, again, to go into building my portfolio and what I want my imagery to look like and stand for going into 2015, 2016. So in essence, I'm investing back in me. Your investment back into your studio doesn't always have to be a new lens, a new camera, a new flash. Uh, sometimes that investment should come in building your por portfolio, build it, rebuilding your website, rebuilding your samples that are sitting in your studio. These are the kind of things that ultimately will help you make more money. Sure, you can make the argument that brand new 50 millimeter 1.2 is gonna help you make more money, but if you don't become a better photographer, a better artist, how in the world are you competing with everybody who's a photographer today. Because you got a 50 millimeter 1.2, that's how you're competing? Uh, it's never gonna work that way. And so ultimately, I'm reinvesting in myself so that I'm taking my work, my portfolio to that next level. So I hope that makes sense. And then finally, I want you to challenge yourself to grow as an artist. This is yet another way that you can build a better portfolio. And what does that mean, challenge yourself to be a better artist, right? Some people are probably out there going, man, dude, I'm having trouble figuring out my light meter. Yes, 
right? These are the kind of things you can do. All of us have weak spots. I've got a weak spot. Uh, Taylor's got weak spots. You have a weak spot. What is your weak spot? What is your Achilles heel when it comes to photography? Is it composition? Is it uh, depth of field? Is it getting shots in focus? Is it off-camera flash? All of you have weaknesses. And let's be honest, you're not gonna tackle these weaknesses uh, right out of the gate. It's just not gonna happen, right? You're not gonna tackle 10 weaknesses in the first six months. Uh, instead, what you should be doing is really putting that list together on what do you wanna work on this year? What do you wanna get better at uh, this year? That's the question I would have. And for me, I felt like I was getting into a rut. That was my weakness. I was doing the same thing every day, every wedding. And yes, it sold prints, it sold uh, you know, my services, but ultimately I was growing stale as an artist. And so I wanted to challenge myself this year to photograph differently, to think differently, to see differently. And that is so hard to do. When I'm under the stress of a wedding day or working with a client, instinctively, all of us do what works. We know what works, we go right back to it because we're comfortable, right? And that's, that's probably not a bad thing. When shit's hitting the fan, I want you to go back to what works. But now on these particular shoots, I'm able to invest back into me and help myself grow as an artist by slowing down, right? Screwing up and realizing there's no pressure. I could in theory walk away from a scene and not have a single good shot to sell. And you know what, as much as that would suck, it's okay because I'm doing this for me. And so you've gotta be willing to invest back into yourself and help yourself grow as an artist. So I hope all these little tips and tricks give you perspective. Uh, just like I'm here investing in my career, I hope you guys uh, reinvest back into your career. And like I said, we have got an amazing show lined up for you today. Uh, we've got Roberto Valenzuela. He's gonna talk about picture perfect uh, posing, which is another amazing resource. You've gotta read this book cover to cover. Uh, you're right, he's authored two books now, uh, Picture Perfect Practice and Picture Perfect Posing. Uh, I don't know if he's just trying to screw you up with all the P's in there, but hey, it's a tongue twister, but it, it works. These books are amazing valuable resources. You're going to want to check out what Roberto's got to say. And then we've got uh, Ilias Frankel here from Squarespace, and he's going to talk to us about building a better portfolio. But here, I've got some great giveaways from you. So we need your aha moment um, or something that stood out to, uh, to you in this segment. We've got Roberto Valenzuela's book, a signed copy of his book. Uh, and we've got one year business level account from Squarespace. So that's over a $300 uh, value for you. So what I need you to do, get social for me. Hashtag Shutter Network. Uh, to Twitter, at Sal Sincata, or on Facebook, BT Shutter. Uh, tell us your aha moment or something that has just stuck with you just from this segment and do it throughout the entire episode. And in a couple of weeks, we'll pick uh, one lucky winner and you'll walk away with some great stuff. So don't go away. We'll be right back. This segment brought to you by Squarespace the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter offer code SHUTTER. All right, everyone, welcome back uh, to Shutter Network, and I am super excited to be here with uh, a personal friend, an amazing photographer, Roberto Valenzuela. Roberto, welcome to the show, buddy. What's going on, man? How you doing? Good. Yeah, super you exhausted? Good, super good. No, just warming up. Just warming up? Yeah. I like it. Well, we're just young, wrapping man. up from uh, Shutterfest. That's right. And uh, that was an amazing, amazing time. You were out there running around the street at midnight, photographing people. Till two in the morning, un unsuspected customers. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they had no idea what was going on, but. It was it, good, it was a good it time. Was, it was, you know, I, I didn't charge those customers. I just grabbed them off the street, took their picture, no charge. Is that right? Yeah. It's a good way, that's how every photographer they should build their business. They didn't appreciate it, man. They didn't appreciate it. <laughs> they didn't you know? appreciate free? No. Uh, you I was know, like, I'm Roberto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Roberto. I'm in from out of town. <laughs> I'm from out of town. I'm from LA, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like respect, you know. Just kidding. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, I always love, I love our banter. We always have a good time. Very you sarcastic, know. both of us. But you more than me. Yes, yeah. yes. The New Yorker in me. That's right. Uh, but today's show, right? We're all about uh, the part we're going to talk about today is just about building a, a better portfolio, mm. finding inspiration. Mm -hmm. Before we do. Uh, I do, you, you've got exciting news. You just published your second book. Tell me yeah. a little bit about it. Um, honestly, I was getting not just tired from an educator perspective, but tired from a photographer perspective about the problem worldwide photographers have with posing. Posing just to be like a epidemic or something. It's like, you know, you, you can study lighting, you can study all this, but posing seems to, seems to be the speed bump for everybody. It, it literally so. does strike fear in the heart of every photographer when they're starting out that's the one question that seems to come up. How do I pose people? Uh, and it's not overly complicated, but you've done an amazing job of mm. like, I think, simplifying it. And, and I'm not just blowing wind. I, I actually, your first book, 
uh, Picture per Perfect Practice, I loved. Uh, and this book uh, is equally as strong, if not stronger. Yeah, because I think the way people were learning about posing was just too much about memorizing rules. Like, this is how you, this is how you pose women, men, children, whatever. And I just f felt, you know, you can only memorize 17 million rules if you have that kind of time. And once you're about to do the photo shoot, I don't know about you, but my brain just leaves me because I'm nervous right. and because I'm concerned that I'm not going to do a good job or I am. And next thing you know, you forget all the rules that you memorized. Right. So then you go to the next step, which is try to like do tear sheets from magazines and try to like <laughs> regurgitate the exact picture and you look kind of weird. Yeah. Like in the middle of a photo shoot, you're like, excuse me, let me just my iPhone so yeah, I can yeah, see my, I mean, my photo, not, right? It's, it's not, not cool. Fluid. It's not cool. And I see people at Barnes & Noble like opening up all the fashion magazine and just taking pictures with their iPhone and I was just like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> you need my picture perfect posing book, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you, you stop copying. Yeah. You know? But either way, um, the book was written with a system that doesn't allow you to, doesn't require you to memorize anything. It requires you to make decisions based on the body language that you want to emit from the person. So if, if you want to, it's a simplified process of posing, man. It's, 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 it makes it so you can communicate the language of posing. You are speaking to your subject and when you take that photo, you're going to be communicating a message to the viewer of that picture, of that photograph. Well, and, and I do, lo I love that you are able to take complex uh, let's say concepts mm. and simplify them and that that to me anybody interested in that I think does need to definitely pick up the book mm -hmm. uh, and, and just even flip through it because I, I don't think you can put it down once you once you start flipping through it it's like yeah, it's it like was, a Bible of sorts right for, <laughs> for posing it was a, a very intense project for me I put my heart and soul and every ounce of teaching ability into that book and I did it because I wanted to really uh, help photographers and help myself not worry about posing so much. Like, why can't I just go to a photo shoot and be in control? Right. Like, why is that so hard to be like, hi, I'm Roberto, let's shoot, I'm in control. But it's a you confidence know? thing, don't you think? Don't you find that, at least I do, I find that other photographers, when they're starting out, well, hell, not even when they're starting out, even people who are experienced like mm -hmm. yourself, myself, I still struggle with confidence from time to time. I know I'm a good photographer, but always in the back of my mind, right? We look mm -hmm. at someone else's images and I'm always like, damn it, yeah. like, I, I'm not good enough, you know? And uh, I think it's that confidence thing, but that's why I like your, the structure of, your, of both your books, is it encourages uh, photographers to get out there and practice. Yeah. The, I have the same problem. I, I still get nervous because we care. That's why you get nervous. If you didn't get nervous at all, you, you might not care anymore. Um, but I'm not, but I feel like even though I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous about the photo shoot, I feel like I'm in much more control about the posing process. And I know what I want from the, my subject, and I just execute that. And the posing, uh, the posing program that I created allows you to keep reaching higher heights, keep going higher in your posing. It, it, it's, it, it doesn't have any style or any limit. It's just you make it what you want it to be. It's like a language book. You learn the language. So you want to say what you want to say, you just say it. And then the, the post comes through. So if you want to say, I want you to look glamorous and beautiful and sexy, you know what posing decisions you have to make to make that happen. Or you can change it and say, no, I want you to look innocent, and more, um, more elegant and glamorous and more like sophisticated. Well, that changes the decisions you make. So it's not about how to pose women. This is the way you pose women. It's, it's how do you want that woman to be perceived in your photograph? Right. And then you just execute that. Right. And it's, that's so much simpler, you know? Um, it requires you to study. I mean, I'm not gonna say here, if you read my book and you finish my book, you're gonna be like magically amazing. Um, no, uh, you're gonna have to work, you know? And you have to read each chapter. And, and if you really wanna learn, read the chapter, think about the photos that you have taken in the past um, and see how you did it when, as you're reading the chapter. Don't just read the book like in the plane. It, it, this book takes time, you know? It's like you need to work and you gotta go photo shoot, you gotta do photo shoots, you gotta... You gotta practice. You gotta practice it, you know? You don't practice. I don't know why photographers feel like, give it to me. It's like, I give it to you, but it's up to you to, to work on it. Like, you need to do something on your own. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, and... and you, you're making a great point. You know, the, the one thing I spoke about a lot at uh, Shutterfest and when I'm teaching is this year for me is a year of what I call reinvention. I want to go out there. I want to change the way I'm shooting, the way my images look, the way I'm lighting them. Well, I'm not going out to a wedding that where a client's paying me money and just like, you know, Shazam, I'm here and yep. we're going to do things differently. I'm practicing <laughs> yeah. uh, before I get out there. But of course. Let's, let's explore this because that's the whole point of this segment is I, I want everybody to understand how they go about finding inspiration, or more along the lines of how do I improve my portfolio? So let, let's start with that for a second. What are some 
top mistakes you see, right? Because you're a contributor to Shutter Magazine. Uh, everybody loves your column where you're, you're offering critique for five images. I don't know, maybe some people don't love it when you, when you give them a bad critique. <laughs> no, man, it's all good. Yeah, yeah it's all about education. <laughs> yeah. But what are some of the common mistakes and pitfalls you're seeing photographers make? I mean, what, what can we do right out of the gate to stop those mistakes? I mean, I think there's some simple ones that are just thumping them over the heads. Hmm. So for portfolio reasons, if you want to increase the, um, the, the, the results from people critiquing images or looking at your images, I think you have to remember that it's, it's the photo of the subject, it's a photo of the landscape. If it's a photo of a subject, uh, like a couple or a bride or a model or whatever, sometimes you, we forget that and we put too much emphasis on other things. Like maybe it's the building in the background or maybe it's the, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I feel like the one breaking point, the tipping point for me, when I started really improving my photography from just doing what, you know, just doing the, the common stuff, you know what I mean? It's like to break out of that shell for me, I had to say, I'm, I want to put emphasis on the subject. So how do I do that? So instead of having the building behind them, and there you, there you go, there's a building behind you, I said, how can I grab that building and how can I make it complement my subject? So my subject's still like the dominant force in the picture. Your primary element. Yeah, and the background only complements that, that theme. So the theme is my subject and the background complements it. Instead of, here's a building, or whatever, and here's also my subject. <laughs> it's like two different things. Right. So that was fun for me, man. That was really, uh, really fun for me. That was what Picture Perfect Practice was all about. It's about composition and, and how to get those, those multiple elements to play in, in, in unison. Instead of being separate parts in a photograph, they all come together and your subject shines because of it. Well, let's talk about that then. So I've got a building, I've got a subject. What's one way they can walk away right now and, and how do you do that? What, what should I do? I've got this beautiful landscape. I, you know, I stick a bride out in a beautiful field. What should I be thinking about to make make the primary element my bride? Let's let's look at for example. Let's look for example a photo of you see you're walking downtown in whatever city you live in, and you see a building, and the building has a cool feel to it. It's like it's, like, it's got some cool stucco or it's old, whatever it is. Um, instead of saying that's a really cool building, let's put the, let's stand in front of it and and maybe kiss or hug, or, or if it's by, by yourself, just move your dress or something. That's not, those are two elements. There's the building and there's, there's the person. What, I'm, what I did was my tipping point for me that started really bringing my photography to a different level was looking at the elements of that building instead. So I said, what elements in that building, for example, looking at your building here, you have, let's say you have, for example, multiple windows. And let's say those windows have some sort of mold framing around them. Um, and let's say those windows are obviously reflective. So instead of putting the person in front of the building, I would crop only the section of windows that repeat themselves. And as they repeat themselves, it creates a converging line. Does that make sense? Yes. And that converging line leads you to your subject. Right. And then the window, the last window, you can actually reflect your subject on that window. And now you have leading lines from the windows of the building that lead to your subject. Then you see this real reflection of, of your subject as, that's what I'm talking about. That's using the elements in the background to, 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 help, the, to help you. The viewer the find, viewer the, find subject. the subject. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, and it's funny you say that because I'm, you know, I, I look at a lot of images. I see all the images that come to you, and, and sometimes I'm just twitching, right? Because it's like it's almost good. Uh, <laughs> right? The image is so close. They have this beautiful scene, beautiful bride. It's like, it's like a 79. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 79. You're so close. Yeah. Uh, because it's one of those things where you see the miss, right? They'll have tree branches coming out of the top of their head. And it's like, if you had just shifted six inches, you would have had this perfect shot. Or they cut off people, uh, you know, at the ankles, or they cut off fingertips, or, I mean, that stuff drives me crazy. Or when you have like a, I always think about this when I'm judging photographs or when I'm taking my own photographs, is elements of interest. So let's say you have a landscape and you have a tree here on the left. People put the couple by the tree. And that's cool, because it's photography, you can do whatever you want. But the tree is already grabbing my attention. It's already an element of interest. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't want the tree, because it's bigger than the couple, I don't want the tree to dominate. So instead, why don't you put the couple opposite of the tree, and now you balance the tree with a couple, right, right. and now you have, okay, the tree's here, and it's on its own, and it's a balance element that balances your couple. Yeah, so, so if I, I want to stop you for a second yeah. and make sure everybody's following, because if I'm understanding you correctly, right, if I've got this tree, 
and then I take the couple and put them right under the tree, you're, basically you're saying that couple gets lost in the tree because it's, it's dominating the scene. Unless you are underexposing the light and bringing special lighting just for the couple. And I mean, to, for you to really let a couple sing when you're competing against a 50 foot tree, tough call. Right. You can do it and it's done. A lot of work. But a tough call. And I don't know how much equipment that would take. <laughs> Uh, because I don't really think you should just take a picture and be like, well, I'll underexpose the ambient in Photoshop later and stuff. Like, just, just do the best you can at the shoot. And if you're going to have that much trouble, why don't you just move the couple to the other side of the frame and now you have a balanced picture, a balanced photograph. So there's all these, there's all these elements like putting people in front of buildings is cool because it, it could be your vision, it could be fine. But try using the elements of the building to to bring the best out of your subject. The building helps you see the subject. The geometry, the balance, the patterns, the, the, the reflections, the uh, whatever, the repetition, the patterns, any of that stuff helps you look at your subject. Right. So just to kind of paraphrase what you're saying, basically, if I'm using a dominant, uh, whether it's a tree, whether it's a building, whether it's landscape, they should in essence support my primary element, which should be my couple if yeah. that's what I'm trying to accomplish, right? Yeah. So if I got a bride and a groom, in theory, they should be the, dom the primary element, but I've got this dominant figure, it should support and enhance the shot, that's right. not dominate the shot. That's right. For example, in Brazil, I was teaching a workshop and uh, we were in this room with these panels. The room was covered in panels. Those panels were divided by a black line, just normal, right? right. Panels, black line. Well, I was teaching my students about how to use that, those multiple panels and those multiple black lines to do something with your subject. <laughs> People were like, well, you can't. You put the subject in front of the panels and there you go. It's like, no, that's, you're, that's, you're missing the point. So I put, the, I put the, the, the model in a way and I angled myself from the bottom of the um, panels and I turned them into triangles. Like if, if you tilt the camera, those yeah. black lines that were vertical are now kind of tilted. And because of the floor, you can see these rep rep repetitive triangles that, that, that went from small to medium to large to larger to larger to larger. And then at the end of the frame, it was the largest triangle, and I put a flat, an off-camera flash on him, and you see all these triangles just leading your eye to the guy. That's and awesome. the guys are like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And I said, this is, when you start thinking like this, when you start thinking like that, you're gonna be a different level photographer. Let's explore that so, for a second. So how, at what point in your career, if you had to give advice to anybody, how did you get to that level? What, it, what is it that, triggered it for you where you started seeing that way, right? Because here's what ends up happening. We all know it. New photographers are starting out. They're paranoid. They're worried about all the wrong things. They're worried about their equipment. And I always tell people the equipment should never get in the way of the shot. Right. Because if it does, then you're no longer thinking about your shot. You're thinking about all the equipment and not screwing up, right? So <laughs> when was it for you or what was it you did to get to that level where you stopped really worrying about everything and just seeing? Because right? that, is, that is what it's about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, the people listening and you, I mean, it's going to be funny, but the truth is uh, you hit a mark on what you said. Uh, it's not about the equipment. And what I did is I limited my equipment and I limited my situation that I was photographing in. So I was, look, I'm a professional photographer. This is how I make my living, right? I don't want to be average. I want to make a living. I want to bring food to the table of my house and I want to give my wife some vacations once in a while. And that's not going to happen in LA <laughs> if you provide normal photography. So I had to step on my game. And equipment sometimes, you know, you, you buy it, but you, you got to learn it. But my, my point is not, my, not that. My point is, I, would, I remember going to um, a small room in, in where I live, even the bathroom, okay? And I said, I don't care what it takes, but whatever is in this bathroom is going to help me make my subject look cool. I don't care what it is. And, and it turns out, the toilet was white, so I actually pointed my flash towards the toilet and it reflected the light and it bounced the light beautifully into my subject. And I was like, that was a moment for me where I was just like, no matter where you are, there's always something that's going to help you do something awesome. Yeah. But you have to see. You yeah, see? Yeah. Like, otherwise, it was just a toilet. But now it's just like, now nothing is what it is. A toilet is a, reflec is a reflector. A toilet could help me, or the bathtub is not a bathtub. A bathtub could be a way for me to have the model sit and therefore change the pose. You cannot say that a, a person standing posing looks the same as a person sitting posing. Right. A person sitting posing changes the game completely because the weight distribution is on her butt or his butt instead of on the feet. Right. 
And as soon as you shift the weight distribution, everything changes about the pose. So the bathtub could be a chair. The bathtub is just a reason for the person to sit. The toilet could be a reflector. The mirror in the bathroom could be another element to, to add to for visual interest. Right. And man, this sounds ridiculous, but I don't know how many photo shoots I did in those bathrooms, man. <laughs> and, and, and my bedroom and my living room. And you'll be surprised. I don't care where you live, whatever, wherever you live, wherever the living room elements are, your dining room table, your china, I don't care. Use it. Um, if you have china, line them up and then put your subject at the end. That's it. So now you have a leading line to your subject, okay? If you have a small mirror, try to do an off-camera flash to illuminate your subject and have the mirror positioned so the reflection shows up. You know, something like that. Um, it, it changes your brain, man. It has. It, it, it changes it, your brain. It, it has changes for me. the way you, you do know what I, You want to know what I do? I do. Uh, I go to a wedding and it's funny, uh, Alyssa can attest to this. I walk into a wedding and I go, okay, today is all about reflections. Mm -hmm. And so I, this is my practice. So when I'm on a wedding shoot, uh, a real wedding shoot, I'm not practicing with models or anything like that. Uh, I say today's all about reflections. And so my mindset switches and all I'm looking for are reflective surfaces. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, it has helped me get better as a photographer. I can't even explain it to you. And then the next wedding I'll go to, I'll go, today's all about geometry. Mm -hmm. And so I start looking for shapes, <laughs> right? And then the next wedding I go to, I'm like, I'm looking for, today's all about texture. And I start looking for texture. And what starts happening now, for me anyway, is after doing it that way, I start going to weddings. And now, just in the back of my mind, I'm looking for everything. And I'm not thinking about it. It's just happening naturally because I've been practicing it and slowly introducing it. That's right. It, you know what happens is when you, when you see like a, like a, let's say you buy like a really unique car and then you, you drive it off the lot and then you're like, you're so excited. You have this really unique car. It's like a pink, a pink um, Fiat, okay? And then you drive out of the thing. It's like, I'm the only one in the world with a pink Fiat, yay. And you're driving and then you go to your first stoplight and you see another pink Fiat driving by. <laughs> and you're just like, oh no way, man. Like, you're, like, and then you're like, that's not possible. And then you drive another, another mile and you see a park and you see, and you see a, a pink Fiat parked in the park. And you're like, what? So you just start freaking out. The problem is those pink Fiats were always there. You just trained, you just now trained your brain to spot to it. See it. Yeah. And in, as a photographer, doing what you're doing, like today's all about reflections. Okay, reflections are, is the pink Fiat, right? Right. So then you start seeing these pink Fiat everywhere. You see these reflections. Um, your brain needs to be trained step by step. It needs to be a, a small step process and it needs to be highly concentrated. So if you want to be good at reflections, you're going to have to spend some focused time on finding reflections, right. not reflections while you're making dinner, while you're reading a book, while you're playing with your computer, while you're checking Facebook. It's like, that's not going to work. You either focus or don't waste your time. Well, you got to be committed to the craft, right? I mean, it's, right. Uh, it's one of those things uh, we say over and over again, you know, you hear it, oh, everybody's a photographer. Well, that's never going to change. Uh, and I'm not worried about everyone being a photographer. I'm worried about, can I, as, as a premier studio, stand out from the crowd? And a lot of people out there, man, they may have started because they were moms with cameras or whatever the case may be. Yeah. But a lot of people want, they aspire to more. And I, I love, you know, the way you teach and you make it easy mm. to aspire to be better. And Sal, you know, no, man, I have fun with photography. So do you, man. It's yeah. fun. I love it. You, you don't, you go to where you're like, today it's all about textures. So it's like, you have this goal. It's like playing a video game and you just want to beat it, you know? I don't know. I don't know about other people, but I really love this craft. It's, it's been great to me. Um, I love shooting. I love being creative. I love pushing my limits. I feel like, and if you're like a geeky person, you can play with equipment and you can like try to know the science behind the photography. But if you're like not a geeky person, if you're like an artistic, don't show me the math kind of guy, you can do it too. Like you right. can just, it just comes to you in a different way. Right. And so photography brings something to everybody. And uh, that's why I love it, man. And it's fun. I, I wish more people would, it comes down to this, get out of your seat, leave your camera out, and do something. Right. 10 minutes. Experiment. Experiment. Let me repeat. Get out <laughs> of your seat. Stop playing with Facebook. Yeah. And try something for 10 minutes. And that's it. And write down your results. I think what Roberto's saying is get off your ass. <laughs> so uh, yeah. if, uh, I, I, you were putting it nice, but right, ultimately, <laughs> we got to get out there. We got to practice. Uh, and work and, and just. You got to master your craft. Yes. That's what I tell everybody every time, every day. 
I, I think every day when I wake up, we have the best job in the world. We, we get sure paid do. money to take pictures. We sure do. Yep. What, what could be better than that, right? We love what we're doing. Yep. But by the same token, competition is so fierce. And if you don't get up and, and be better than the day before, every yeah. day when I put that camera in my hand, I want to be better than I was yesterday, man. Yeah. Even at this stage of the game, and it's so funny, even you, yeah. your stage of the game, you're an established photographer, you're an established educator, and people don't understand, like, I, that doesn't mean I put my camera away and I, and I, no. I got it all figured out. The opposite. It is yeah. the opposite. I work so hard. You work so hard to yeah. be better than the day before. And, of course. And that's, that's what a lot of people are, are missing. How can I inspire students? How can I teach workshops? How can I teach students or, 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 or photographers if I'm not pushing myself anymore? Right. It doesn't work. You get old you know and stale. I mean? It doesn't work. Um, that wouldn't be respectful either. Like, you got to respect your craft. You got to respect your education. And, um, and that means you do got to get off your ass and do something about it. Every day, there should be something. Even if it takes you five minutes, like something stupid, whatever. It works. But if you wake up and go to bed and you, and you didn't get better as a photographer, you kind of wasted something. Right. And you all have five minutes. There's no way anyone can say, even you, Sal. Even me. You. I have five more minutes. The busiest minutes, man be alive on planet Earth, <laughs> you even have five minutes. I and do. I do too, no matter how busy I am. So... I teach that. I, I, yeah. when, I, when I'm telling someone, like, off-camera flash, I mean, you know this, man. Everybody's trying to figure off-camera flash. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're new to, you know, the, the industry. That's the one thing that's overwhelming is flash. Right. And so I teach everybody, get a can of Pepsi, put it on your kitchen counter, mm -hmm. and start taking pictures. Mm -hmm. Bounce it off the ceiling. Bounce mm -hmm. it off the wall. Bounce it off a, a, a white shirt. Bounce it off a cabinet, right? But no, Sal, we don't have Pepsi in my neighborhood. Oh, you don't have Pepsi? You no, we don't have it? Pepsi. I'm just saying, people, there's excuses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuses, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, in my town, yeah, they only sell Coke. Yeah, they only sell so Coke. So I can't yeah. practice. No, no, yeah. I can't do it. The kids. The kids. Yeah, the dogs. The dog, the food, the babysitter. Yeah, I my can't brakes do it. are going. You know, yep. <laughs> I, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. I, if you follow my career in the past, I have a whole session, uh, and I put this in Picture Perfect Practice, where I, photo, I bought a bunch of bananas from Trader Joe's, like on a, what do you call those, banana rack things? Banana rack. No, not the rack itself, but the multiple bananas that come in the... I have no idea. You know, like when you buy, a, <laughs> when you buy bananas, it comes yeah. with like six bananas yeah. or something. A bunch of bananas. <laughs> a bunch of bananas. No wow, this got complicated. Yeah. <laughs> I get the bananas and I would put the bananas on a light stand. And the b bananas uh, seem to... Uh, emulate the, the skin tones of a person. Interesting. Very well. So it sounds really dumb, but you'd be surprised how I started studying like the inverse square law of light and how the intensity of light falls by a quarter, you know, as, as you move through from the solid light source. And I was just like, what? And then when I grabbed my bananas and I started looking at the light hitting the bananas, because the banana, the skin or the, the, the skin of the banana was so close to a human face, uh, not in color or shape, but right. in texture. texture. I, I, I saw the inverse square law of light um, life. Like I saw it in action and I didn't have to hire a model. I didn't have to go out and go to Model Mayhem and be like, can you come to my house? And I just, I put the bananas and I practiced like that with my flashes, man, like my speed lights, off camera flash. Um, it was the coolest thing. And I really did learn a lot from that. And it was no joke. It's not about the models or, just about being, just about doing it in your house. Right. Whatever. But Moving at your own pace. Yes. I think it's hard. I think it's hard when you're learning to, to go out in front of people, paying clients or just another human being and fumble with your gear while you're trying to figure it all out. Because the average person doesn't want to just stand there for three hours. Not even if it's your husband or your wife. Um, or your it, kid. Yeah. Nobody wants to sit still. So ultimately what they're looking to do is you've got to, you know, just get out there and practice on a can of Pepsi, Coke, a banana, uh, and, and just get better. Be committed yeah. to excellence. I That's think right. ultimately, if you want to get better, uh, there's, there's educators out there like yourself, like myself, that will help you get better. There's books that'll help you get better. There's videos that'll help you get better. Mm -hmm. You just got to do it. You got to yeah. stop being lazy. Yeah, and, um, and being more hands-on too, you know, reading is one thing, but being hands-on with an instructor, you know, uh, being hands-on, asking questions, experimenting. So. Well, and I want to pause there because I've got to wrap this up. This has been mm -hmm. an amazing segment, by the way. <laughs> uh, people have seen you speak. People have um, you know, read your book. But yeah. honestly, if somebody's looking for a more intimate way of connecting with you, being kind of coached by you, and working side by side with you, I know you got workshops. Talk to us a little bit about those and, and what they're like. Um, 
Well, they're really fun. Of, of course, you're there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> of course, no. no, honestly, that's to me the people don't, don't understand the the workshop that I teach. The, the workshops where I'm I'm the instructor on it. It's an experience you'll never forget. Um, I am an educator that's very dedicated to make sure you are blown out of the water with how much you learned. But it's not just about how much you learned. It's about how well you can maintain that knowledge in your head. Like the way I teach those workshops, it drills you so when you leave, it, it's hard to forget. Instead of trying to remember, it, I try to teach it so it's hard to forget what you learned. There's definitely an uh, art to teaching. Of course. And you yeah. have an amazing way, I think, of breaking things down, simplifying them. Uh, and, and I do 100% wholeheartedly agree with you. Being hands-on at, at a workshop, side-by-side, side, is completely different than even when we're on Creative Live or you know reading a book. It's completely different. It doesn't matter where, what video you're watching, YouTube, whatever it is. Doctors pay for medical school. Right. And, and they, they get their education and you pay for it and you don't, you don't, you don't say, I'm just going to watch YouTube on how to do heart surgery. Right, right. right? Yeah. Um, I don't get it. Like lawyers, they have to go to law school and they pay for it. Photographers don't want to, you know, it's like, do it. Yeah. You want to learn. It's an investment in your Find in your an future. educator. It doesn't have to be me. Right. It can be you. It can be anybody else. It can be whoever you think will be the best for you. Find that educator and um, ask questions. Go to the workshop. Learn from them, you know. Uh, you know, you, you re respect the art of photography and pay for your education. Don't try to cut corners and skim on that and be like, well, there's YouTube. It's like, you're just not gonna, you just don't get it. Like, you're never gonna make it like that, right. you know? I've attended many workshops. I've learned a tremendous amount from workshops. Um, it's cool, it's like a school, but with people who have been doing it forever, right. you know what I mean? So, or who really know how to teach it. So. I'm teaching four workshops this year. This is the first year in my career. That and we're going to put up four. your schedule. So where are you yeah. teaching? Four private workshops this year, all private, 15 to 20 people maximum. All workshops are coming up in the next two months okay. or three. They're all this summer. So if you live in, uh, here's the schedule, Los Angeles, California, uh, in sometime this summer, September, August, I don't know when. We'll throw you the put the schedule. Up. Los Angeles, California, St. Louis, Missouri, right here, yeah, in baby. your hometown. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Dallas, Texas. Okay, so if you're in the South, you can go to Dallas. And the other one is Orlando, Florida. So if you're in Orlando or you're in the East Coast, that's your workshop. We do hire beautiful professional models. We have a great experience. We go out to dinner. We get to know each other very well. Uh, the workshops are long, but who cares? You're there to learn. That's what you're there for. We're there to have a good time. It's a party. We're there to get to know each other. That works only $1,250 per student, so it's not, not that expensive. No, Very not affordable, that at all. two days long, very affordable. So, Roberto, let's do it, man. Thank you for all being right, here, Sam. as always, me, I brother. love you. <laughs> okay, and, uh, thank you. And you heard it, guys, uh, it's a, uh, get ready. I need you to get social and uh, get out there. We got great prizes for you this episode. Hashtag Shutter Network. What was your aha moment here when we're talking to Roberto uh, about getting out there and bettering your portfolio? Don't go away, we'll be right One back more. after the break. This segment brought to you by Photo Flash Drives. For 20% off your next order, use code SHUTTERNET7 at checkout. Offer valid through the end of July. Welcome back everyone. I'm here with Ilias Frankel from Squarespace and continuing on with the conversation of inspiration, uh, we're going to start talking about your web presence and what you do next once you get those images. So first, welcome Ilias to the show. Thank you so much, Sal. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell our audience, you know, where you're from, what you do, and, and uh, just kind of your history. You, you guys have an amazing history, I think. Sure, sure, yeah. So I work here at Squarespace. I do marketing, and I work with photography um, in a big, in a big special, special way. Um, and the company itself, Squarespace, is, you know, a company that powers hundreds and thousands of websites around the world. Uh, we specialize in giving creative tools to the designers and photographers and musicians and everybody in the um, it's a beautiful platform, um, and we're trying to, you know, get into more hands, basically. And uh, we think we created a beautiful tool, and we want to share it with the world. And that's uh, why I'm talking to you guys today. Yeah, and I will tell you, I see you guys always at, like, WPPI and, and the big trade shows, and your booth always looks amazing, nice and clean. It's, it's what I aspire to 
have one day. But the reality is, you know, there's that marketing piece to it. And then, of course, there's the, the piece that's, you know, behind the scenes, under the cover, and that's your actual product. And uh, I'm not going to lie, looking at all your websites, the one thing that jumps out at me really is how clean the design is. And, and I don't want to get too much into, the, like, you know, people can go to Squarespace and they can look up your sites. But I'm just telling you, uh, as a photographer, as somebody who's all about having, like, clean design, clean lines, uh, I go to yours and I'm just blown away by all the, uh, the pre-designed templates that are there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we definitely put so much emphasis on design here at the company. Um, it's the most, it's the biggest thing we do is design and functionality. And, you know, that's our biggest competitive advantage against our uh, competitors. But it's also customer service and some other things. But design is really, you know, uh, what sets us apart. We don't have thousands of templates. We have, you know, 25, 30 templates. But each one is, there's so much care put into each template. And each one is so special on their own. Um, we, you know, work with the best designers in the world to make sure designs are um, fresh and new and people have what they need, you know, like from things from parallax to, you know, image size loading and uh, the way things look. It's all kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely our bread and butter. Well, let's talk about that a little because that really ties into the episode and the, and the heart and soul of what we're talking about here is uh, just that next level for photographers. In your experience being out in the marketplace, what do you feel is the number one challenge? Maybe it's not even just photographers. Maybe it's just small businesses in general. What do you feel the, the biggest challenge they're facing with their web presence is? I think a lot of people you know, go into it thinking how complicated and complex the process could be. In reality, building a website today um, with something like Squarespace is very simple. You know, I build websites on a weekly basis and I build one website in an hour or you know, a couple hours in max because I know the platform, but somebody coming into something like Squarespace could easily learn it and build a website. But it's so fundamental to have a, a for, you know, photography t you know, website or a portfolio website today if you're a photographer uh, because that's how people find your work. Right. Um, it's, it really is the, the most crucial element of, um, you know, other than photography in your, in your photography life. And, and I completely agree with you. I think the one message I'm constantly trying to get out to people is understanding that 95% of the time, your website as a photographer is the first place people are going to find you. That's their first interaction with you. It's their first impression. It really is your first impression. And, you know, we, we say it over and over again, you want that first impression to be the most amazing impression uh, of you, even though, you know, your work could be amazing and you could, you could have it on a shitty website. Um, I hope that's okay to say. <laughs> yeah, I love um, it. Um, <laughs> You'll get along great with website, the audience. And, you know, it takes away from the work. But if you have a minimalistic, beautiful website that gets out of the way of the photographs and lets the photographs speak for themselves, that's what you really want as a photographer. Yes, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. The, the, so when we get back to that biggest challenge, I think what I see the challenge for photographers and small businesses in general is going with this less is more minimalist approach and understanding that it's your product, your service, and in our case, our product is our imagery. Uh, that's what somebody should notice. When they come to my website, I don't want them to notice all this whiz bang technology, all these clicks, all these signups. I just want them to notice my imagery as a photographer. And quite frankly, when you think about today's bride, you know, let's talk about it as it pertains to a wedding photographer or even family portraits. When you think about that, the one thing they're concerned with is it's branding, right? right. So today's bride connects with you as a brand. They know Louis Vuitton, they know Gucci, they know Prada. Uh, and when they come to your website, if your website looks like it was done in the 1990s, they're going to equate your, no matter how good your photography is, they're going to equate your photography with the 1990s. And then that 20 something year old bride who's looking for a more modern uh, approach is going to possibly reject your brand after just being there for a couple of minutes. That's, and that's, and that happens so often, you know, there's actually kind of a anecdotal story here, but my brother got married two, week, two weekends ago. And, um, you know, we found the photographer for, for his wedding on online and we stumbled upon it and it happened to be a site that looked great. Um, this lady named Masha and, um, you know, it, it, and that's what sold us really is, is the way the images looked. It wasn't cluttered. There were some select images from a couple of weddings. Um, it didn't have a thousand images on it also. That's, that's one of the things photographers love to do, um, is put <laughs> all of their images on their website. Not, not the best, not the best practice. Um, no, my, you know, the, the thing I love that I see all the time is they'll be like, if you go into their galleries, it's like, uh, flower pictures, detail pictures, girl pictures, like, holy cow, man. Like 
just show me the meat and potatoes of who you are as a brand. Right. And then if I want to see more, because I've never in all my life as a photographer, and you know, I, I've been doing this for a while, I've never had anyone hire me because they say, oh my God, those pictures you took of the, of the shoes were just amazing and I knew I had to have you. Uh, so I don't know why we do that. It is amazing. But yes, less is more. Definitely. So let's continue on th this path. In that less is more um, you know, philosophy or mentality, what is it you feel that Squarespace brings to the table from that minimalist? And, and understand that today's photographer, the landscape of today's photographer is changing. I would say if you rewound 10 years ago, uh, you know, photography was nothing short of like black, black voodoo magic, right? You had to be like part mathematician. You had to understand all these, you know, gadgets and lighting and ratio. And, and don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. As artists, we should still understand that. But the reality is today's photographer is everyone. Everyone is a photographer, but not everyone is a business person. Not everyone is a web designer. Not everyone understands, you know, social media. What does Squarespace bring to the table for that new genre of, you know, or new demographic, if you will, of photographer? Right, right. That's, that's a great question, actually. So, I mean, we, I think we kind of highlight um, and focus on the very, very professional photographers. Like, you know, we have amazing people who use our platforms, like Scott Kelby, Carl Taylor, uh, Serge Ramilly, Jared Poland, these kind of guys. But we also cater to people who are not, you know, uh, to that level professionally yet or, you know, are not looking to go to that level professionally. Um, but all, all our tools, all the tools for Squarespace are the same across the board. We offer amazing support, customer service. We offer, you know, amazing design, as I already said. Um, we do amazing SEO um, with, like, no plugins necessary. So if you're, you're running a WordPress site, you know how many plugins you have to put into your WordPress site to make sure it's SEO friendly. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. so let, let's pause there, right? Because a, a big part of my message is definitely around search engine optimization. Uh, you know, I've taught many a photographer how to go from, you know, page 10 or non-existent, you know, in the world of search to page one. What does that look like from a, from an SEO perspective? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could go to our uh, squarespace.com slash, slash features and you can see all the things we offer. But in terms of SEO, we, you know, we've been around for 10 years. So our pages are listed um, with amazing quality scores across the board. What we do offer is amazing built-in SEO. A lot of companies, a lot of our competitors have SEO as an additional thing they offer in their in their plans. Uh, we don't do that. It's, it's built into every site. And so there's no plugins necessary. Everything's automatically site mapped for Google. Um, you know, it's, it's all clean URLs. It's all indexed and searchable. Um, it's super simple to do your met metadata. All of those things are already done for you. Um, so it's just a lot less headache. And that's kind of what we see as our platform. It's all in one. It's peace of mind, right? It's hosting. It's CMS. It's your domain. It's your customer service. It's, you know, all of these things um, at, you know, a relatively, you know, low price. Yeah, and that's, and it is a low price. What's your, because I remember I looked on your website last night and it's, the, the monthly plans are what, up to $25? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, only, it's only $8 a month if you buy it for the year, uh, which is, you know, incredibly cheap. And if you guys, you know, since you guys are uh, fans of Shutter, you guys will get an offer code. So it's offer code Shutter, you get 10% off, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that uh, is cool. Um, but uh, yeah, we you know we, we offer eight dollars a month for the for the basic plan, and if you're looking to do like more you know build a bigger website, there's other plans that are a little more expensive. But the eight dollar plan really works for for, for but just about anybody. Um, you know we offer commerce as well, which is kind of cool, uh, built into the system. So Let, let's so let's I do want to talk about commerce whole, whole type because that is a, that is an important aspect of what we do as photographers, but. What I love I'm hearing you say, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but really the platform is is dummy proof really right i mean that's the ultimate goal and exactly. i'm talking to you guys out there now you know as you're growing your business the one thing i'm constantly challenging you to think about is what's your scalability plan look you're i've got an it background the last thing i want to do is program my own website uh this is your way at eight dollars a month at twenty dollars a month whatever their plans are uh this is your way of outsourcing so you don't yes you can open up a, you can open up your own wordpress site and do all the plugins and shopping carts and things like that. But ultimately, where's your time better spent? And right. Elias, the one thing I, my message is constantly is finding those trusted partners that, that can grow with your business. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of hosting companies out there and I'm not going to name names, but many of them actually piss me off. And, and here's why they piss me off, right? Forget service, forget all those things. Not that they're not important, but 
they have this model, and I hope I'm not setting you up for like giving me the wrong answer here, so I apologize. Um, but they have this model where I do all the work, I'm the photographer, they have a shopping cart, and then they take 15% of my sales for literally doing nothing. Mm. What does your shopping cart model look like? I mean, yeah, ours is a lot more simple. Like, again, we get out of, we get out of the way of the, of the customer or the user of the platform. So we don't take anything uh, from the user. Say you, you sell a print or you sell some merchandise, whatever you sell on your site. Um, we have a company called Stripe we work with, and they take a, the regular standard 2.5%. That's just a know, credit card processing that's thing, all, right? That's all that happens. Right, you're going to pay that no matter what. Fees. There's nothing else. That, that's it. Wow. You, you should yeah. make it a little more complicated, Ilya. This way, uh, <laughs> we like to simplify things. That's, that's, our, that's our value. Yeah, and I know, I know it's, it might seem like a dumb thing, but I'll never forget from the first time I came into this industry when I was looking for a shopping cart solution. It were, in the beginning, if you go back like eight years ago, there were really only kind of two options. There was one company out there doing it, and they were taking 15%. And then your other option was to like build your own cart, which was you know, just insanity because uh, the average photographer, they don't have time because they're usually sole proprietors. And if you think about what keeps them up at night, they don't want to like buy books on how to web, be a web programmer for dummies, right? right? They just right. need plug and play. Right. And then there's the other a aspects of that, right? I need a platform that, and I'm going back a little, you know, Flash was huge. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, Apple basically just said, uh-uh, we're not supporting Flash. So all of a sudden, photographers' websites were out of date. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about your platform, but keep it like... I don't want to get too technical. Like, so the right. platform is, I'm assuming, scalable, non-flash based. Uh, right. And now, what's new in the market? And I'm gonna and I'm gonna say it the wrong way, but I thought what's new is the ability to create one website, and it works on your iPhone, your iPad, and your computer. What do they call that? Uh, yeah. So exactly. So you know, we're working on making sure our products are in line with you know industry standards are, and we're setting industry industry standards. Um, yeah. So each website you create on Squarespace. Even though even Squarespace.com, which is built on Squarespace, which is kind of cool, um, is resizable on tablets, on mobile devices, uh, which is kind of amazing. So you know, when half your traffic comes on a mobile phone, um, you want your site to look good on your on your iPhone as well, and we do that uh, without you having to do anything on your own side. Again, we get out of the way of your photography, we get out of the way of, of your you know your time, and we do it for you um, because we know how important it is um, as you know mobile gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, and that's like, I can tell you right now, my personal website, salsincata.com, was a custom built WordPress site uh, probably about five years ago. And right now, my web designer is getting on me. He's like, okay, your site, now if somebody goes there with a mobile device, it doesn't look right. right. And that's something that's, I think that's important nowadays because, like you said, I think my bride today, today's bride, hmm. is increasingly mobile, increasingly hmm. web savvy. And if they come to my site, on their phone and they're having a horrible experience whether it's plugins don't load right or they can't see the images right and the experience is anything then equal to what it would be on a computer I think I'm gonna lose that bride definitely definitely and that's 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 kind of like what we see as the picture of the industry right we, we stay ahead of all these things and make sure that we're providing a product that's um, you know competitive with everything that's in the marketplace and uh, you know whatever whatever that may be in the future we're gonna be there um, to make sure that our customers are you know fully fully insured for all these things so talk to me about the shopping cart functionality how does that work how hard is it to set up give me like zero to 60 I'm, I'm a dummy user how hard is it to, to get that shopping cart set up so I start selling stuff sure it's it, I mean it's it's as easy as adding an image to your site so we actually offer a thing called a products page. You throw in your, your, your images, you throw in your products, whatever it might be, and you create a store, and you can have a store run up and running in literally two minutes. Um, it's, it's really, really amazing. Um, and there's no and extra it, fee for the store? No, no, no. You, you know, you buy, you buy, even at the $8 level, you get, you get to sell items. If, you know, you buy the $16 level or, you know, the 20 whatever, $5 level, you get some more items, right? That's the only difference. Uh, but for most people, you know, there's, there's, a, there's like a level at $8 that works. And, you know, you got to store up in, in two minutes, five minutes. It's, it's really, really simple to do. And is it and geared towards photographers, meaning can we... Yes, yeah, so uh, you can sell digital and physical goods and services. So you want to sell a lecture or you want to do a, a, you know, a, a photography tour in your city or you want to do... A, you know, a, a T-shirt, or you want to sell your own your own your own lens or your own your old camera, you can do that as well. 
Oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't know that. So I, I'm sure people are like, why is Sal asking these stupid questions? But I think they're the same questions that the average photographer would ask. And, and the reason I, I intentionally didn't go too deep on the site was I wanted to think like, you know, my audience and what questions they would have. That's and funny. so that's really interesting. So I can get this cart set up. It is geared towards photographers. And what I mean by being geared towards photographers, do I have to worry about my images getting stolen? Oh, not at all. Not at all. You could actually enable functionality that prevents that. So, you know, the right click functionality can disable that on, on your site. Um, but, you know, um, like most people know, if somebody wants to take a screenshot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not, they're they're going to find it. About that. <laughs> they're going to find it one way or another. And I've seen clients do all sorts of things when it comes to stealing your pictures. I've literally had clients get a print from me take a picture of the print mm -hmm. uh, and then crop it, edit it and, and go and have that printed. So, you know, the reality is they're going to find a way to steal it. But what yeah. I don't want to do is make it super easy for them. Yeah, of course. And if you have a client and they're working on Squarespace and you want to give them a private gallery of images, you can do password protected stuff as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can sync things with Dropbox. There's integrations with companies like we have integrations with 500px and SmugMug. If you have those things as well, you can integrate that in. So it's, it's a lot of different features. It's a lot of, you know, really, really cool stuff. Now talk to me, you mentioned something about digital images. So did I misunderstand what you just said? I can actually, through your site, if I want to offer the ability to download those digital images, that's something I can either sell or just offer through the site? Yeah, definitely. You could sell that or, or offer that as a download, uh, which is kind of amazing. Or you could have it, you know, you could sell it, but give it no value, you know, give it no price. Right, right. Have, have it as a download, which is kind of awesome as well. So you have all those functionalities. And, you and know, there's no for, fee for that either? No, there's no fee for that either. And we have you know an amazing, amazing uh, cross functionality between Twitter, Foursquare, Instagram, 500px, and Flickr, so you can import all your images pretty easily. And we also offer if you have a WordPress site or a Blogger site or a Tumblr site, there's a one-step import, a one-button import that imports your entire site over to Squarespace, which is kind of cool too. Now that is cool. So it'll go out, grab all the images you have yep. in your gallery or something, and bring them in. And bring them in, and then you just have to do some tweaks on design and some, you know, some, you know, changes on font. But yeah, it brings in all your content, which is kind of cool. That is really cool, actually. Yeah, you know, and so what I'm thinking about is, I'm just thinking the future. You know, what does the future look like today? When I think of my workflow, and probably a big part of my audience, um, I don't sell digital negatives right out of the gate. It's not even an option uh, because I feel like that's an incomplete service. But we could have, this conversation of digital negatives will be one of those age old battles I think that will go on for, forever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there still is a way for my clients to get their digital files. And today the delivery mechanism, I don't know, maybe it's clumsy, maybe it's not. What, what ends up happening is uh, I've got to burn those to JPEG, download them to a thumb drive or, or a DVD or CD, get that to the client. And so what would be really interesting as, as we grow as a business is to explore how exactly we can use a platform for, like that so that after they've already made their purchase from us, now that becomes a secondary delivery option for them. Like, hey, definitely. your digital files are there. Definitely, definitely. And that's, you know, that's kind of the beauty of you know, having um, cross-functionality with things like Dropbox and all of these platforms. Now, I'm curious. This is not something that I, I don't know that I, I know that I would do, but I am curious. What if I wanted to put up three different file sizes uh, up there and sell and have them pay a different price for each different file. Does the system support that or would I have to upload it three times? No, no, you could, you could totally do that. You know, we, we have that, so if you, you know, we have it, if in a more simple sense or what people deal with it now is say you're selling a t-shirt and you have it in small, medium, large. Yeah. You can sell, sell a print in small, medium, large or you know, different file sizes as well. Super simple to do. And so if they buy the web, you know, I could then sell web ready, a web ready size for 50 bucks say. Yep. But then I could sell uh, full res for 100 and the system, whatever they buy, it will associate a downloadable file. Exactly. Let's send them a link, um, a private link that's, um, you know, goes to their email and they can download it from there, uh, which is kind of cool. That is actually really cool. That's mm -hmm. got my, uh, that's got me thinking uh, really right now about some, <laughs> some ideas here. I'm always, I'm always looking for new ideas, new ways to make money. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's talk about what, what's the future for you guys? Where, where do you see, where do you, cause you guys are really ingrained with photographers, I think. And where do you see the future? What, what's, what, what do futures look like for, for you guys, whatever you can share? Right. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, yeah, we we're, we're very big in the photography community. You know, we obviously have a big presence and a lot of amazing photographers like Scott Kelby use us. Um, and you know, the future for the, the platform, the company as a whole is to expand and to, you know, be more ubiquitous in the States and internationally. 
so far it's offered the platform is only offered in in, uh, in English, um, but in the future we'll be localizing for more markets, for European markets, for South American markets, for Asian markets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one thing. We're also looking to make the platform easier and simpler to use. It's already so simple to use, but making it even simpler. So what uh, features can we take out? What things don't people use that they don't need that we you know get rid of and make the process even simpler than it already is? And Apart from that, it's you know just making sure our design is always on point, that our customer service is you know industry leading, that you know we can, uh, remain competitive in terms of what we offer. Like we, we just launched a really cool product called um, Squarespace Logo. So say you you know you're on a budget and you can't hire a designer to make you a logo for your company or you, whatever your business might be, um, you go to Squarespace Logo, and if you have a Squarespace site, you could actually go ahead and make yourself a free logo. Um, it's one of the most beautiful tools I ever. How does that? How does that work? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, if you just go to squarespace.com/logo, you type in the name of your company, you pick a logo from um, our database, which is a partner with uh, the Noun Project, and then you put, you know, you put some some font around it, you put some color around it, and you have a beautiful logo. You can download it, uh, use it for your site. It's, so it's, it's somewhat cool. it's somewhat template based, but it it sounds like it's a great jump start for businesses who are just getting started and want to have that professional look because. You know, the, the whole gist of this conversation is uh, where do we see businesses making mistakes? And right. of course, you know, I was just talking to someone this morning who's relaunching their business and they're like, well, where do you think I should start? My logo or my website? And I said, yes, uh, because <laughs> they, they, they go hand in hand. You, you don't right. want to start a new website that's tied to a logo that's, you know, wrong. And you don't want to put up a new logo on a crappy looking website. And often people pay, you know, thousands of dollars, uh, thousands of dollars for logos. Um, and you know th this is a free service we offer to our customers. And if if you're not a member of Squarespace, it's only ten bucks, which is you know the, you know the most competitive rate. Um, so yeah, we, we have those kind of tools, and we'll, we'll be building more and more of those kind of tools. One cool thing that we offer is, um, which I didn't mention to you yet, is a portfolio app. So say you're on the go and you have your iPad with you, and say you're at WPPI or you're at a big trade show or you're you know out with friends or you're at a restaurant and you have your iPad with you. And you want to showcase your photography, but you don't have a, a Wi-Fi connection. You don't have cell service. How do you do that? Well, the, the app allows you to actually import your galleries from your site onto the app and then showcase them in beautiful, beautiful ways. Um, so if you just go to Squarespace.com and you check out our mobile apps, you'll see it. It's a beautiful, beautiful app. Um, I've seen it be, being used by tons of photographers, and they really say that it changes their, you know, their entire aesthetic. And people just could look at the look at the photographs even without a website just just their photographs well yeah i mean that, that makes total sense and now that i think about it i'm constantly in a place where i want to showcase like maybe just a handful of my portfolio shots and yep. i'm like hold on hold on hold on i'm going to my website i'm trying to navigate on my phone that is actually something i want to look in uh look into immediately well Elias, i gotta wrap us we are approaching the end of uh this segment but this has actually been for me uh and i'm hoping our audience very very uh, insightful and educational just on your company. I got to admit, as much as I know about your company, I learned a lot about it uh, just in this segment. And next time, you got to come out here to St. Louis and uh, be on the show live. Definitely, definitely. That'd be my pleasure. Thank you, Sal. I mean, I, I really appreciate it. You guys have been terrific. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, check out Squarespace. If, it, if it's the right fit for you, We'd love, uh, we'd love for you to check it out. And don't forget to use that offer code SHUTTER to get 10% off. Absolutely. And so what I need from everybody out there now is I need you to get social. So what was your aha moment today? What was something that uh, myself and Elias were talking about that was just really made you start thinking about things differently? Uh, go out there and you can win. We're going to, Elias, we are going to give away a free year of uh, Squarespace business. That's a $300 value. Uh, so they're being very generous. If you've been thinking about like, hey, I need a new website. Well, now